Hi and welcome back. Today we are going to discuss SIRDS. Now what do you understand by the concept of SIRDS? SIRDS is something you see at a young grade, but it's what you would have maybe called a root or a root sign. Any question that has a root or a root sign is usually referred to as SIRDS. Now, when they ask you these questions in the exam, you would see they will clearly state, do not use a calculator. Therefore, it would be allocated three or four marks, but if you use a calculator and you jump to the answer, you would only be allocated one mark. So therefore, all steps need to be shown. Now, the most common thing about SIRDS is that the rule is based on inside over outside. Look at what I'm doing. I am taking the power of the inside and I'm putting it over the power of the outside. So what we have is x, the inside over outside. That's the first main rule about certs. The second thing you need to remember is that when you're working with a few pieces in a question, so in other words, if I had an X and a Y and a Z, then you have to do inside and outside for every term or every expression that is in your root sign. So you're going to have X 1 over 2, Y 1 over 2, Z 1 over 2. Now how do I know it's 1? Number 1, they didn't give me any numbers, so I accept it as 1. And when they do not give you a number outside a root, it is accepted as 2. Unless they say something else, it is always accepted as 2. Now let us do an example. If I gave you the root of 22 to the power of 6, cube root 6, it would equal to 22, 6 over 6, which is equal to 22, because 6 over 6 is equal to 1. If I had given you, let's do the next example, 64, x to the power of 16, y to the power of 8. Now, when you are doing these sums, if they say no calculator, you don't have to show them how are you getting 64 um, rooted because it is generally known that till grade 12 you should know the squares and cubes till 12. You should know that the square root of 64 is what? It is, you, this is general knowledge, your multiplications, your squares, your square roots, your cubes, your cube roots, you should memorize them and know them already. Right, so if you don't know it and you do press it in a calculator, they won't assume anything, they will still give you your full marks for it. Because where the actual test would come in would be in your unknowns. Now, the root of 64 is 8. How do we work out x? It's going to be inside over outside. What is outside? Outside is 2. They didn't tell us that. It's not there. You must know that. Then we have y. It will be 8 over 2. Our final answer being 8, x to the power of 8, y to the power of 4. Now let us go to other examples that they test you. They like to test you the roots with numbers and unknowns. But look at what we're doing now. Now, many times pupils can do root of 75. If you press it in your calculator, you'd immediately get the answer because we now have more sophisticated calculators and more advanced calculators. However, if you are planning to go to university and you write the entrance exam for university, you're not allowed to use a calculator in that test. How do we do it then for 75 without a calculator? It's called the fishbone method. You start using prime numbers. 5 can go into 75 15 times. 5 can go into 15 
three times. Three can go into three one time. This is a method or concept that should have been mastered in grade seven or eight. If you are not familiar with this concept, you need to go back and revise it. If you have no intention of going to university and you're not going to write that entrance exam, then you may use your calculator, but this would be a big disadvantage if you are writing that test. Right, so 75, because it's a square outside, that means I must group in twos. So my answer would be five root of three, but what happens to the x squared? It becomes x inside over outside, based on this rule. Plus, I can't change root of three, x inside over outside, all over 27, again you can use your calculator, if we say 3 can go into 7, 9 times, 3 can go into 9, 3 times, 3 can go into 3, 1 time, because it's a square, I'm grouping it in 2's, ok, our answer is 3 root of 3, x to the power of 4 over 2. Again, inside over outside. Now, if you look, 5 root of 3 is like saying 5 apples. There's another root of 3. And then we've got x 2 to the power 2 and x 2 to the power 2. So, what do I actually have? I have 5 root of 3 x plus root of 3 x all over 3 root of 3 x to the power of 2. Now what you need to notice is that these terms are the same. It's like saying 5 apples plus 1 apple which gives me 6 root of 3 x all over 3 root of 3 x squared. Now you can cancel. 6 divided by 3 is 2. That x can cancel with 1x at the bottom. My final answer is 2 over x. If you are going over past exam papers, you will see that they would always give you the thirds with unknowns. The reason for that is because it is easy to use the calculator when there are no unknowns. But when there are unknowns, then you have to know the concept. So if you understand that we're going to break down each piece, you're going to be fine. Thank you for watching this video.